picture this. You have a beautiful, beautiful vegetable garden filled with tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, zucchini. Now imagine that same place, but with vibrant, colorful blooms. It's like adding that touch of magic to your already beautiful space. But why bother with flowers when you can use that space for more tomatoes or more peppers? Well, my friend, there are some fantastic reasons why flower companions are a must for your vegetable garden. This cilantro is out of control. It is really taking over this space. And while I love the flowers that cilantro produces, and the pollinators love them too, they really are not in the perfect spot here at this moment. So I am going to have to trim this because they're really shading all of the plants that I have behind them. I know, I know some of you are already quick to your keyboards typing what I could be doing instead of cutting these flowers. Thank you, I appreciate that. Always love those comments that tell me what I should be doing. But I'm going to leave the things that I have here as they are. That one definitely needs to be cut too. I can happily, happily say this year that cilantro is almost like a weed in my garden and I am here for it. Flowers attract pollinators, butterflies, bees, flies, and they love the nectar in those flowers. When these pollinators visit your garden, they transfer pollen from flower to flower, regardless if that is a flower or a vegetable, which helps in the fertilization process of your vegetable plants. So by adding flower companions, you're essentially inviting nature's little helpers to your garden. Flowers can act as a natural pest deterrents too. Isn't that a beautiful cosmos? A few of these flowers have a certain fragrance that some pests just don't really prefer. Others attract beneficial insects to your garden that, that help you with getting rid of the bad guys. When you plant these flowers in certain little places around your vegetables, you create a natural barrier that keeps unwanted pests at bay, reducing the need for nasty pesticides. This one is gorgeous. Now let's talk about biodiversity. And I am not going to be talking to you about natives versus not natives. That's really not my fight. But a garden with a variety of plants creates a healthier ecosystem. When you introduce flowers into your vegetable gardening, you're essentially diversifying the plant life in your little patch. And when this happens, you attract a wider range of beneficial insects such as ladybugs, lacewings, and other type of beneficial insects which feed on garden pests like aphids and mites. Which, you guys, I think that I have aphids like by tons this year, but that's another video. These good bags as, as a natural pest control, like I mentioned, and I don't know about you, but I can definitely get all the help that I need when it comes to fighting pests in my garden in a natural, healthy way. By adding flowers to my garden, I get to enjoy the lovely, lovely blooms that I get with them. And you guys, I get tons and tons of pollinators by adding these flowers to my garden. And when these flowers also help me to get rid of the bad guys, that's a plus for me. So let me show you a few flowers that I have been growing in my garden along with my vegetables. The first ones are marigolds, and I have been growing marigolds in my vegetable garden since year one. This is my fourth season growing vegetables, and from the beginning, I knew the marigolds were going to be champions as far as growing them for companions for my vegetables, especially around my tomatoes. If you are new here, you probably don't know this, but I love, love to grow tomatoes, and they are my number one vegetable to grow. Marigolds are known for their ability to repel pests. The strong scent of marigold flowers act as a natural deterrent for many insects and pests that can damage your vegetables. 
aphids, nematodes, white flies, and certain beetles are less likely to bother your vegetable plants when marigolds are nearby. While I know how important marigolds are as a companion to my vegetables, I gotta be honest and say that I grow marigolds for a completely different reason. See, in Mexico, during the celebration of Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, Marigolds are the number one flower uh, that people use to decorate their altars and their fragrance. It just reminds me of home. So marigolds are very, very close to my heart. And that is really the main reason why I grow marigolds in my garden. They are lovely to look at. They really don't take too much space and they are very, very easy to grow. I only bring two types of varieties of marigolds into my garden. The shorty ones, as I call them, they are this really, really dark burn orange that I get by the trays at my local garden center. They're just so easy to find that there is no need for me to start them from seed. But there is other variety, the white puffy double bloom one, Kilimanjaro, and I love those. Now those plants, the Kilimanjaro, they grow kind of tall, about two to three feet tall, and the blooms are just so lovely, you guys. And they also smell really, really amazing. So all the shorties I use plant around my garden, I normally just make a little fence. Uh, to act as a repellent for the bad bugs and the other ones the white ones i use i just plant them as a regular cut flower because they're nice to look at i really gotta find a good spot for these guys oh look at my nasturtiums they look phenomenal i gotta say Nasturtiums and I had a little bit of a rocky start the first couple of years that I tried to grow them in my garden because they are kind of uh, special that way, I guess. They're not really hard to grow. I, I should be uh, a little bit more clear on this. I think that nasturtiums in my area here in central Indiana don't necessarily love the heat. They don't really like a spot where they get full sun all day. They don't really enjoy that. Or maybe you just haven't found a variety that enjoys that as much. But for the last three years, I found that the nasturtiums that I had put in the east side or somewhere where they get a little bit of protection from the evening sun do way better than the ones that are just in full sun. So right here next to the garage, on the east side of the garage where they get even in shade, they love it. They are thriving, you guys. Look at all that. Oh my gosh. I am going to be having so many seeds and I am going to be preparing because I can definitely save seeds this year. Here are a few things about nasturtiums that I love. One, the blooms. You guys, the blooms are amazing, okay? And honestly, if this plant didn't bloom for me at all, I wouldn't care because look at the foliage. I mean, the foliage is just gorgeous. And the whole plant, the whole plant is edible, so adding this to your salads is amazing now unfortunately nasturtiums are one of those plants that are just going to be the ones to take one for the team basically when you plant nasturtiums around your vegetables the bad bugs the ones that will normally be looking to eat your vegetables will look at nasturtium first making them a really a trap or a sacrificial plant for for the bugs a couple of years ago, I had one of you message me about what to do because your nasturtiums, the ones that you had planned around your tomatoes, were being eaten by something. And I was like, great, that's awesome because that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be the plant that pests look at first, unfortunately. On that subject, if you could only grow one type of nasturtium in your garden, what variety would that be? Let me know. Cosmos flowers can act as a companion plant that repels or distracts pests from your vegetable crops. The strong fragrance and foliage of Cosmos can help mask the scent of vegetables that pests find irresistible. Additionally, the presence of beneficial insects attracted to Cosmos, such as ladybugs and lacewings, can help control common garden pests like aphids, mites, and caterpillars. I have these two lovely varieties of Cosmos here. 
Look at that. Those two together are going to look amazing. And you guys, look at the foliage. I love Cosmos. I do have to say, because of their size, I mean, they're really pretty tall. This right here, this right here is just one plant and they can get really big. Because of their size, I don't use Cosmos as much around my vegetables, not in the way that I will use marigolds or basil. I, but I do use Cosmos here and there in corners where they're not going to be massive. Another cool thing about Cosmos is that they have really, really long roots, tap roots that penetrate the soil as they mature, which helps with soil structure and also for drainage. So if your soil is a little bit too compact or you just have a lot of clay soil, maybe using Cosmos will help you with that. This right here is a sunflower and this monster of a plant is a volunteer. Actually, all the ones in this corner, which I have about five of them, are volunteers and I'm just going to let them do their thing, you guys, because they are absolutely gorgeous. Now, there's a lot of talk about sunflowers and vegetables not being a great combination but I personally have not experienced anything like that. And I know there is a lot of uh, talk about them helping with the soil or helping with bringing insects or not being really good next to certain vegetables because they steal the nutrients from it. I have heard people talk about those things from both sides. I gotta say, I have never had any problems with vegetables dying next to my sunflowers. So I can't really talk about that. If you are wondering about that, you're gonna have to do your own research. But what I have found with sunflowers, especially in my gardens, is that they are a magnet for pollinators. Birds, bees, butterflies, flies, you name them, they love my sunflowers. And because they attract a lot of pollinators, those pollinators just hang around and they help with fighting the bad guys or I keep calling them bad bugs. I don't even know if that's the right way to call them. I know I'm gonna get some hate comments from you. Oh, that's a butterfly. Oh, come this way, come into the camera, right there. I think that was a monarch. See, that's what I mean. You gotta start bringing the flowers into your garden. In my opinion, having sunflowers in your garden is really, really beneficial because, because it brings over a lot of beneficial insects to your garden that eat the ones that are not necessarily nice to your vegetables. Now, because of their size, sunflowers are also one that I cannot just throw in between tomatoes or peppers because they get huge and they can easily, easily shade all of my vegetables in a raised bed. So whenever I'm out here uh, putting some seeds of sunflowers, I really have to think about where they're going to be and if they're going to be shading something behind them. Right here, I am on the north side of the property and where the camera is, is the south side. So these guys are going to be shading nothing behind them. And the same thing for the guys on the other corner. So I just have to make sure that they are not going to be blocking the sunshine for anything that is behind them. By the way, these right here are the seeds that I purchased from Sunflower Steve, which you guys, those have been the most stressful five minutes of my life trying to get into that opening of his seeds. I mean, things sold out in like eight minutes, literally. So I was able to get two packets of seeds and hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to get some seeds from that. But aren't they amazing? And I know, I know I have different colors here because they have different centers and different shades of color. So can't wait to show you that. Another one of my favorite flowers, which really is an herb. It's not really a flower, but it produces flowers. So I guess in a way is basil. You guys, I love basil. If there is a plant that is both great to look at, amazing for the pollinators, and it tastes amazing when you are using it for cooking, I have to say that it's basil. Basil is also another plant that I use I start a bunch of them indoors from seed. I make a little bunches and I just add a bunch of them around my tomatoes. Planting basil near tomatoes is believed to improve the flavor and growth of both plants. Basil also acts as a good companion for peppers, eggplants, and beans. It helps to repel pests specific to these vegetables 
and enhances their overall performance. While basal repels certain pests, it also attracts beneficial insects. Bees, butterflies, and other pollinators are attracted to the flowers of basal plants. And it is for this reason that I leave a bunch of these plants to use cotto flower. And because I plant a lot of these basal plants, I get a lot of harvest throughout the season. I just came here about a couple of weeks ago and I pruned a bunch of these basil plants because I really didn't want to let these guys go to flower. And they just keep on giving me more foliage, which means that I have to figure out what I'm going to cook with them because I have plenty of basil. And while we're talking about that, you guys, I love basil for cooking. I love to use them in Italian dishes. I love to make pesto. You can also make tea from basil, which I have never tried, but apparently it's really good. I don't know how I feel about basil tea because I feel like basil is more for like eating, not for drinking. You know what I mean? I don't know. Now, most of these flowers that I mentioned, I start a lot of them from seed. Nasturtiums, cosmos, marigolds, basil, and sunflowers. Although sunflowers, I direct seed. I don't start them indoors. A lot of these plants are really, really easy to start from seed. So if you have the excuse of not being able to find these locally, then you can easily set up a small little area in your house where you can start a couple of nasturtiums or a couple of basil plants and you can really really help your vegetables grow better and healthier when you add these flowers to your garden. Now these are not the only flowers that are beneficial as companion plants for your vegetables. There are a ton more out there. I just don't really have the room for a lot of them but as I get more experience growing vegetables I am going to be trying to grow more of other beneficial flowers to grow around my veggies. Other flowers that are also beneficial to grow as companion flowers are chamomile, sweet alyssum, dill, calendula, lavender, bee balm, and borage. And if you have any other recommendations for me to look at as far as flowers go that are beneficial, let me know in the comments because I would love to know. And also, here's another question for you. If you could only grow one flower that was a great beneficial flower for your vegetable, which one would it be? If you wanna know mine, I will write it down in the comments because I was thinking about this. If I could just only grow one flower, which one would it be? I think I know, I definitely know. I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you have any questions or nice comments, let me know. And until the next time.